How you doing, YouTube? Silver Joker here. <laughs> well, I told you guys I was going to take a couple weeks off, and I am. Um, I haven't made a new video. I've just been working on cleaning up some of the videos in my channel, putting you know better thumbnails on there, clean up some of the audio, and, and repost it. And this is an example of one of those. This video I posted about a year ago. The sound was really bad. You can hardly hear the conversation that me and Phil had. So I ran it through a few mixers. And I think I uh, cleaned up the sound a little bit. It's still a little raw, still a little rough, but I think the viewers who haven't seen it are going to appreciate that. And ones who have, maybe it's a time for a second look. But anyway, this video is really good. It's real relevant. So uh, enjoy. All right. How you doing, YouTube? Silver Joker here. So we're going to get right into this. So I was down at... Uh, Phil's store down at uh, Franklin Street Coin just recently. Um, I was going to make a video of, you know, just buying some silver like I normally do. And we had a conversation. And that conversation, I mean, we were talking after I had already bought the silver and I had already finished making the video. We just kind of had that conversation. That conversation kind of took a mind of its own. And so what I did is I just turned my camera on and just let it play while we uh, had this um where we had this conversation. So without further ado, let's just get into this and uh, I'll let you guys hear some of the stuff that Phil and I talked about. Uh, believe it or not, we actually have, we actually sell more silver and gold when it starts to run up. Yeah. You know, people should be buying now. When it starts running, you have more people running in because yeah. what they feel it's gonna make a, you know, a rash run up to, you know, right. 20, 30, 40%. They don't, they wanna kinda grab it at the beginning, but the best, I think the best thing to do really is just to buy over time. Yeah. You know, consistently buy over right. time. It doesn't have to be a lot, it right. be a little bit, but you hit the highs and the lows, but um, over time, if you have confidence in the metals market, you know, if your holding period's five years or greater, who knows what it's gonna be. There's no, nobody's gonna be able to tell you or predict that. So, yeah. you know, you just buy consistently. I think that's the key for the price. All right, so I asked him, you know, him being a dealer, what would be the best, um, Silver. I mean, we. I know I buy a lot of constitutional silver, as many of you do. Um, but as a dealer, you know, we're, he's the guy that we're going to be uh, selling our silver to. So I asked him just generally, what is the uh, best type of silver if he was going to stack silver? What would be the best type of silver to stack? The ninety percent silver, the U.S. silver coins, are going to be your best buy in terms of if you're just trying to get the best bang for your dollar in right. terms of the amount of silver you walk out with. The next step up is the purified or refined silver, which is a 999. Right. And then your silver eagles kind of top the list there. And right. some of the other premium silver, um, you're going to pay, you know, four, three, three dollars or more even for, for that over spot value. So um, for money spent, if you're just trying to accumulate silver, yeah. if that's strictly your goal, then 90% is your best buy. Yeah. It's easier to count how much silver you've got if you buy one ounce bars, right. or ten ounce bars. Right. You know, it's easy to figure all that out. Right. But when it really comes down to it, the amount of silver you get for your dollars, which really counts, and ninety percent usually is your best buy. Right. You know. All right. So after hearing that, you know the obvious questions is okay. Um, am I stacking too much constitutional silver? I mean, if 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 uh, ninety if uh, three nine silver is just I got so much more value. Um, to a dealer than, um, than the constitutional silver. Maybe I should rethink how much constitutional silver I'm actually putting in my stack. So I asked him uh, to kind of clarify that a little bit. I mean, with him being a dealer, um, should I stack more uh, three nines than the constitutional silver? Um, we pay, you know, we, you know, in terms of the amount of silver, obviously we're going to pay higher for three nine than we do for ninety percent silver, just simply because it's the amount of silver that we're right. buying. But um, they both have a market. I don't think either one is really better than the other well, terms of reselling. Mm -hmm. um, some dealers, and I can only speak for myself, but some dealers may only prefer nine 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 silver, mm -hmm. and maybe and maybe some of them prefer ninety percent because that's where their that's right. where their sales are. Uh, each dealer has kind of a, an idea of where their sales are and right. that's kind of what they focus on. Right. So, um, but either one should be very easy to liquidate and right. in the cash. Yeah, it's as yeah, good as cash, basically. All right, so I was curious and I asked uh, Phil, I asked him if there was a certain uh, spot price, some uh, a certain or uh, golden percentage or something like that where he would consider uh, it better as a dealer to buy uh, overselling or vice versa selling over buying 
I mean, because if you're thinking about it as a, as a seller, as we're going to be one day, uh, hopefully uh, selling our silver to, um, you know, realize some of the gains, hopefully, that we made over buying silver over the years and spot price. So I asked him, was there a certain spot price that he would consider uh, buying over selling um, if it happened? No, not me. I mean, just... as a dealer, um, you know, we don't we don't wait for prices to buy or sell. We, right. we kind of work in the in the market. So if the market's high, we buy high and sell high. I gotcha. If it's low, then we buy low and sell low. I mean, it, it all is hinged on the spot market. But we move up, you know, a lot of silver in terms of buying and selling. So we we don't try to hold silver. I don't I don't buy silver and think that in two three weeks it's going to go up. By then it's all gone anyway. Right. So there's no no incentive for us to hold silver right. uh, because it continually comes in and you're constantly buying in, in the current market. And right. So you buy and sell in the current market, um, it doesn't really make a difference in terms of whether it's 15 or 17. Now to the buyer it makes a difference if it's 15 or 17, right. you know, how much they can buy, <laughs> right. or, Absolutely you know, if they even want to buy. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, to a dealer, uh, typically if they're working in the current market, it shouldn't make much of a difference. Right. If silver's 15, 18, 21 dollars, you're going to buy higher, but then obviously their selling price is going to be right. higher. So it's it all kind of works out um, in terms of flipping the silver. All right. So then I asked him the million dollar question. You know, the question that <laughs> that is like I hear this all the time in a lot of different videos, and a lot of people bring it up is this notion that if you have a five or if you have a uh, hundred ounce bar like people like to buy a lot of the hundred ounce bars and bigger but most of the hundred ounce bars and silver goes to let's say hundred dollars an ounce or whatever how are you going to sell it is there going to be a market for that and i know that's a question that's been on the minds of a lot of people so i pose that question to phil because he would be the person buying it and um, you know, as a dealer, would that be? A, is that a concern of moving a hundred ounce bar if spot price goes up? And this is what he told me. It should be a legitimate concern to a certain point. Um, again, back to my other comment: if silver is at fifty dollars an ounce, um, that makes that bar five thousand yeah. dollars. Okay. Um, if you have avid buyers that believe silver is going to get to sixty dollars an ounce, then you have buyers for that right. $5,000 bar. If for some reason um, you don't, then it's hard to unload a bar like that because you don't have any promise that that silver's gonna go up. The only reason silver really sells, people sell silver or buy silver is because there's idea that they're going to somehow either park money in silver where they can just hold money steady right. or it's gonna make money for them. So there always has to be an uptick in terms of uh, being able when silver gets very high that people believe it's going to go even higher so that's where your that's where your buyers are um, everybody would love you know has silver say so I'd love silver to get to 50 well uh, if everybody sells at 50 right. where are your buyers all right so I know uh, lots of people buy hundred ounce bars I mean I've seen um, on YouTube where a lot of guys are showing their hundred ounce bars that they bought I've seen them in, in just about every um, local coin store and even the coin stores I've gone to in other places, just about every single one of them have 100 ounce bars in there. So I know they, they buy them and they must sell them. Um, I know Phil, he's had 100 ounce bars in his store before too. He had one really nice one that I almost bought. It was a vintage bar. So I know he buys them and sells them as well. So I asked him to clarify that a little bit, um, you know, with, with being cautious about that. And he answered it by answering what he did in the past when silver was close to $50 an ounce. In uh, 2011, yeah, yeah, 2012, <laughs> uh, we still had, you know, strong buyers because they honestly believed that it was going to 60, 75, 80, yeah. maybe $100 an ounce. Oh, and, you goodness. know, they felt it was still a good buy. And, um, and you just don't know, you know, when you're in that particular time, you don't know what it's going to do. So, um, you know, we continue to buy and we continue to sell it. It was just as, you know, easy yeah. to buy and sell as it is today at $15. Yeah, so I'd say we talked for probably about 25 minutes. Um, and for the most part, I mean, it was pretty positive. I mean, Phil's outlook on the uh, metals market um, was pretty, pretty positive for the most part. 
Um, you gotta, you gotta, you know, keep in mind he's been doing this a long time. I mean, this is his business, so it's his livelihood. So buying and selling uh, precious metals is pretty important to him. So he really does keep an eye on the market, a lot closer eye on the market than I do, and I'm sure many people do with his whole livelihood doing it. But you know, before we end it, this is what he told me. Years ago, silver was stuck at four dollars to six dollars an ounce, right and it now. stayed there for years. And nobody, right. it didn't really generate much interest, either buying or selling. We right. had, we would have silver coins, he rolls us ninety percent silver on the, yeah. the counter, and offer them at, yeah. you know, five times face value or yeah. six times face value, and you know, it was you couldn't sell it even at right. that. So um, nobody really was interested until it showed it had yeah. the ability to go up and down in value, yeah. and it. Did show the ability it had to go up, and recently, it's, you know, over the last five years, it's shown the ability it's 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 also it can go down in value. So, um, but cycles, you know, come and go, and you know, you don't know how long the cycles are, but there's a good chance that you know, silver and gold probably will make another run. You know, when you don't know, but you well, want to be prepared for it. Yeah. I actually did go down to. Uh, to Franklin Street Coin Company to buy constitutional silver, what you're seeing here. And I did buy some, and I'll share that with you guys in a later video. But what we talked about was just too good to not share with you guys. I mean, the information he gave me was just so good. So many questions that I get on in the comments, so many questions that I hear people ask in their videos. I mean, I just thought that it was just a, a good idea to share this with you guys. Um, and I appreciate you guys stopping by. I appreciate your time. I mean, you could be doing anything, but you, you know, you stopped by to, to listen to what I had to say. So I hope what you heard today was, um, was worth you stopping by. I mean, um, you know, Phil is just a fountain of knowledge. He's the smartest guy I know when it comes to precious metals, uh, specifically silver. Um, and so, uh, you know, I had to share it. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. I mean, if you like what you see, I'm going to be doing more stuff like this in the future. Go ahead and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And, uh, you know, leave me some comments. Let me know how I did. Let me know what you think. Maybe leave some questions and we'll see if we can get them answered in uh, upcoming videos. Anyway, let's just keep doing what we do. Let's keep on putting that silver in our stack. Let's keep on, you know, making that financial future secure. I mean, silver is the best way to do it. So keep stacking. Peace.